hello class uh, welcome to the first lecture on signal sign systems in this lecture we will be talking about uh, we will be just having a basic introduction into the subject and after that we will uh, start with uh, the basic classification of signals okay so right away from the title of the subject itself you have signals and systems right so uh, what is a signal and what is a system uh, a signal can be anything that uh, conveys something uh, some data from one point to another the data can be an information or not that is whatever you are uh, conveying it may give some new information to the receiver or not it doesn't matter but signal can be anything it can be any sort of data transfer but as far as we are concerned when it comes to electronics and communication engineering and the scope of uh, this subject we can define signal as some variation it can be a variation of voltage or it can be a variation of current so variation of some sort of energy uh, voltage or current with respect to time that is some some that is a basic definition of a si signal that is it is some variation of voltage or current with respect to time uh, this uh, variation uh, of voltage and current this can be obtained from some other thing like uh, when you are hearing my sound when you hear my voice in this lecture it is actually I am speaking and uh, the sound is ma made by me and it is transferred through the medium which is air into the microphone that I am talking into and from the microphone it is converted into electrical signals will be then from the microphone onwards you get this sort of signal that is some variation of electric signals with respect to time that is a that is a very rudimentary or basic definition of a signal and that is what we will be using in uh, this uh, topic uh, or our subject because that is what is of relevance to us okay uh, now uh, now coming to the definition of systems basically a system can be considered as a black box okay we need not necessarily know what is inside the system but what we know is it has some sort of input and some sort of output and it does some sort of manipulation it can be anything right uh, it can be um, for changing uh, the signal from one one form to another it can be removing some uh, or extracting some da some data from the system uh, from the signal sorry or uh, it can be it can even be generation of a signal it can be anything but the thing is that uh, a system takes in some sort of input which is again the input is a signal right it takes some signal and it uh, gives some signal and this is not mandatory there can be signals uh, which only take some uh, input or there can be systems with only generate signals but usually as a rule of thumb we can say that a system is something some entity whatever entity you can it can be electrical it can be electronic it can be mechanical it can be digital whatever right it is a system it is some it is a black box uh, which takes in some input does some manipulation and puts out an output okay so uh, we can uh, give a definition of a system as an entity that manipulates uh, one or more signals Uh, to accomplish a function T 
to accomplish a function thereby yielding a new signal new signal right this can be sort of like a basic definition of system that is it manipulates one or more signals that is the input and they were yielding a new signal that is the output here it is to accomplish a function that is it is doing something it is doing some manipulation it it, it has to serve some purpose right for example um, this uh, microphone right it, it is a system it is an electromechanical system it takes the input as the vibrations of the air that is created when I am talking and it uh, converts it into electrical signals that is the output the conversion that is the function that it is doing right so that is a basic definition of a signal and a system uh, now moving on now let's start with the classification of of signals okay uh, we'll get into systems once we have we are done with signals okay so the first classification that we can talk of is continuous time versus discrete time okay so let me draw two images and uh, uh, let's see if you can identify which is a continuous time or which is a discrete time because um, the name itself is sort of self-explanatory okay okay so this is the continuous time signal and this is the discrete time signal so what is happening here continuous time means okay the both are time axis continuous time means uh, for the time that we are uh, considering the signal there is a value for voltage and current for all the for any time for any point of time you are considering there will be some sort of voltage or current value okay that is even if you take here that is if you are taking t equal to 0 0.01 or 0 0.00001 it doesn't matter however small or whichever time uh, in between say point a to point b you are taking it will have some definite value that is uh, a continuous time uh, signal usually in, uh, in many of the physical signals real life signals uh, it will be continuous time only but when it comes to uh, discrete time what is the difference here you can see these uh, dots okay these these are dots and uh, these are the voltage or current values at certain times okay at certain times and uh, mind my drawing um, assume that these uh, points are equidistant from each other are equ equ equally distant from each other that is if this is t this is also t this is also t this is also t this is also t that is uh, every after every capital t seconds you get a value but you won't get uh, suppose this is 0 and this is t this is 2t like that between 0 and t you won't find any uh, value for voltage or current you get a value at uh, 0 you get a value at t you get a value of 2t 3t 4t so on so on so forth this type of signal where you get uh, definite or finite values at 
discrete times discrete uh, points of time this is called as a discrete time signal and uh, you can get a discrete time signal from a continuous time signal using the process of sampling you might have uh, heard this term in your basic electronics class or basic communications class or whatever so this is the um, this is the first part of digitizing a continuous or real life signal that is you sample uh, after you go through the process of sampling you will uh, don't worry we will uh, learn sampling in detail later but and please understand this understand this now that uh, you have a continuous time signal which is having a value uh, for every point of t and you have discrete time signals which are having values of uh, voltage and current voltage or current at only certain points 0 t 2 t etc this t capital t ca depends on the signal uh, depends on the particular signal you are trying to sample and sampling is the process by which you get discrete time signal from continuous time signal okay so uh, representation wise uh, continuous time signals are represented as x parenthesis t okay x parenthesis t and uh, continuous time sorry discrete time signals are represented as x square bracket n okay and uh, the relation is actually after uh, the relation of sampling is actually x of n right x of n equal to x of n t s let's let this be t s okay so 0 t s 2 t s so on and so forth. that is this n and uh, this n is 0 uh, plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 so on and so forth these are integer values that is we from the actual uh, continuous time signal we are taking values at 0 x of 0 that is uh, this we can uh, write as x of n as a collection of it is a sequence of values right so it can be what x of 0 x of plus 1 x of minus 1 x of plus 2 x of minus 2 so on and so forth so this is a sequence it is a collection of values right that is obtained from the actual continuous time signal uh, the next classification of signals is even signal and odd, odd signals <coughs> even signal versus odd signals right uh, so what is what is it what is an even signal and what is an or odd signal right uh, i'll just give the definition first suppose we have a signal x of t right and uh, we are uh, taking the value x of minus t okay that is if we have uh, x of 1 x of 2 like that similarly we can take x of minus 1 minus 2 like that right and this this is a per particular operation x of minus t it is called reflection we'll uh, come to that once we are dealing with uh, operations on signals okay. so if x of minus t is equal to uh, now we can just simply consider this as functions right basic mathematical functions if x of minus t is equal to x of t this is an even function or even signal right and if x of minus t is equal to minus of x t this is an odd signal right. and this is this should be for all t for all values of t right so how will this look uh, when we are drawing a signal suppose this is uh, x of n x of t sorry and this is the t axis this is the origin right an even signal means it will be 
symmetric across the time origin. Suppose consider my, my drawing, consider this is the same thing here. That is, this signal will be like mirror reflection on the vertical axis. Right. This will be symmetric. Symmetric about vertical axis. That is what it is called. It is uh, vertical axis or the time origin. This is the even signal. And what about odd signal? Odd signal will be will be anti-symmetric. That is. If this is the if this is the uh, origin, this is the x uh, let's say vertical axis, will be anti-symmetric. That is here it is like a mirror reflection. Just what is happening here will happen here, but here will be inversion. That is called anti-symmetric. Let's say anti-symmetric about. vertical axis that is time origin right. that is the basic definition of even signal and odd signal now uh, one uh, let's say something that we can uh, derive from this uh, definition of even signal and odd signal is that uh, suppose right suppose i am writing i am i want to express my signal x of t let it be anything and uh, there can be signals which are uh, neither even nor odd right that there can be signal that is it is possible that some signals they may represent even or odd symmetry and they may not right uh, for example this signal okay this signal it doesn't have any even or odd symmetry there can be signals like this but those signals which show this kind of property they are called even and odd respectively that's all all signals need not fall into the category of odd or even signals please bear in mind okay but there is, uh, and the thing is that any signal that we are writing any signal that we have we can represent it as a combination of even and odd right we can represent any signal any signal whichever signal you have we can represent it as a combination of an even signal and an odd signal right so uh, let's see how we can do this uh, let's put this as equation number one from definition okay and Okay, this is from basic definition. And uh, suppose we are taking x of minus t. This is x of t. We are taking x of minus t. It means we will get like this, right? 2. So now we have uh, 2 equations and uh, we have 2 unknowns. From this we can find x e of t x c of t and x o of t uh, in terms of x of t what, what will it be uh, solving 1 and 2 we get what do we get x e of t is equal to 1 by 2 x of t plus x of minus t and x O of t is equal to 1 by t 1 by 2 x of uh, t minus x of minus t. So this is the result that is first thing we can represent any signal x of t in terms of a 
even signal and an odd signal and how do we get that even signal and odd signal it is obtained like this xc of t equal to half of xt plus x of minus t and x or o of t is equal to half into xt minus x of minus t okay this is the result please remember and uh, these are all uh, real signals right the, uh, or at least uh, I, I, it was implicit that these are all real signals now uh, if uh, we have uh, complex signals there is uh, one more uh, type of let's say symmetry these are uh, symmetry even symmetry and odd symmetry there is one more type of symmetry it's called conjugate symmetry that is x of minus t is equal to x conjugate of t this is conjugate symmetry conjugate symmetry means what will be happening the real part will be even having even symmetry and uh, the imaginary part will be having odd symmetry if this condition is satisfied that particular uh, complex signal will be having conjugate symmetry okay okay so we'll uh, stop this lecture here uh, in this lecture we have uh, dealt with uh, uh, the basics uh, uh, basics of what a signal is and what a system is and uh, we had studied two classifications of signals via, uh, which is uh, continuous time and discrete time and even and odd also we mentioned the concept of conjugate symmetry and also we made a result regarding how we can represent how we can represent any signal using an even and odd signals in the next class in the next lecture we will uh, uh, see the other types of uh, signals right other classification of signals